Hi, I'm Sue King, archivist at Morrison Reeves Library and the board of the Wayne County Historical Museum. I'm out here at Earlham Cemetery on a gorgeous, warm, sunny, uh, beautiful colors kind of a day in October, which would be perfect for Tales from the Departed. Unfortunately, it's 2020 and nothing goes according to plan. We didn't want to let the centennial of women's suffrage go by completely unnoticed, so we are going to do the next best thing, a virtual Tales from the Departed. We know it's not the best, but under the circumstances, it's about all we can do. So I hope you enjoy these, uh, these short little videos that we're going to post, and hopefully we'll be able to meet back here in the cemetery next year. Thanks. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Addington Reed. I grew up right here in Richmond and graduated from Richmond High School and Earlham College. I've always been a writer, and while I was at Earlham, I wrote short stories and had a bit of a side job as a society reporter for the local papers. After I graduated in 1912, I moved to New York City and attended Columbia University. I was the only woman in the class of 13 to graduate from the first class of Columbia School of Journalism. I took several writing jobs in New York, trying to work my way up to being a real professional writer, as I've always wanted. I worked in advertising and on the New York Sun, and eventually I was a special writer for the New York Tribune. New York City was a center for the women's suffrage activity, and I was lucky enough to land a job as a publicity director for the National American Women's Suffrage Association. In 1917, I married Howard Reed, a very well-known lawyer in New York, but before that, he was a neighbor from Richmond. We were married at my grandfather Benton's house overlooking Glen Miller Park. It sits at the top of North D Street and is still there right next to Roosevelt Hill. I took a little ribbing from some of my suffrage sisters for quitting the movement for married life, but I continued to lead a life that was not your traditional domestic home life. Even though I was now married, I continued using my Addington last name in my newspaper career. I began working for the Ladies Home Journal where I wrote my Pudding Lane stories, which were later published as books. My most famous book was published in 1922 and was called The Boy Who Lived in Pudding Lane. I went on to publish seven other children's books. I also wrote two novels in which one of them, Dance Team, was made into a screenplay in 1932 and was shown here at the local Tivoli. I was listed in the Who's Who in America for many years. Someone once asked me, how do you write for children when you don't have any yourself? I could only reply that I was once a child myself. Writing children's stories is for me simply a lark. I love to do it and it's deliciously easy. Although an illness crippled me later in life, I continued to support many liberal and literary groups. I traveled to Mexico frequently for my health, but it didn't seem to help. I passed away in November 1940. In 1943, Earlham established an annual Creative Writing Award of $100 and called it the Sarah Addington Award. 